Welcome to the Love and Light Live podcast, empowering crystal lovers to learn and experience the art of crystal healing. Get ready to listen in and follow your soul calling with crystals. Hello, and thank you so much for joining me for the Love and Light Live podcast brought to you by loveandlightschool.com. I'm your host, Ashley Levy, and this podcast is the number one place for all things crystals. In today's show, we'll be exploring the healing properties of rainforest jasper, also known as rainforest rhyolite. This is a crystal for love and earth connection. But before we get started, I'd like to answer one of our listener questions. Remember, you can submit your own questions anytime at loveandlightschool.com slash ask for the chance to have your question answered right here on the show. Today's question comes from Kathy, and Kathy says, Dear Ashley, I wonder if there is a healthy, safe, and organic way to repair broken crystals. I was so disappointed recently when the special quartz angel figure I purchased at the Omega Institute tipped over, causing one of the wings to break off. I knew that E600 glue would do the trick repairing it, but I wonder if this would affect the properties and vibration of the crystal. Thanks so much for your insight and wisdom. I'm new to your podcast and have learned so much in such a short time already. With gratitude, Kathy. Well, Kathy, thank you so much for your kind words and for your question. And I just want to say I've completely been in your shoes before. I know firsthand what an absolute bummer and disappointment it is when you have a piece that's really special and meaningful to you and it gets broken or damaged. Um, I I can't remember if I've told this story on the podcast before or not, but my brother-in-law was visiting my husband and I once mm, quite a lot of years ago now, probably like 10 years ago, and I had just acquired the most beautiful Van Adenite cluster. It was probably the most stunning Van Adenite I had ever seen. Um, It was an expensive piece for me at that time, you know, like it, it was something that I had really saved up for and treated myself to. And it had the most vivid orange red color. And it seemed like all of the crystals were perfect and arranged in this beautiful cluster. And I reached up on a shelf to grab it so I could show it to my brother-in-law and in my excitement had some butterfingers happen, dropped the crystal on the hardwood floor in our dining room and it shattered. I mean, it just broke into so many pieces. So there was definitely no gluing or repairing that crystal. I was left with, in fact, probably six or seven smaller individual Van Adenite crystals not quite the glorious cluster it had once been. So a lot of people ask, you know, what does this mean when a crystal breaks? And then also, like Kathy asked, what can I do about it? Well, I personally usually don't put too much stock in if something like a crystal breaks, especially if you happened to drop it. I used to think that this was just a way of some extra energy grounding out, and maybe that's still true, but I've kind of moved away from that belief. I'm I'm actually a pretty rational, logical, skeptical person, and I feel like if you drop the crystal and it broke, well, then it just means that you dropped the crystal, and maybe you need to be more mindful. But if you discover a crystal and it's broken, you don't know how it got broken, no one in your household will fess up to it, then, you know, maybe you can read a little bit more into that if you'd like to. But I think, you know, I I wouldn't put too much stock in that. And then in terms of, well, okay, first is, do you actually need to repair it, right? Before we get into how to repair the crystal, do you need to? If it doesn't bother you, if your crystal has a little chip or if it's broken in half or if it's like my beautiful Van Adenite cluster and it's now many smaller pieces, then no, you don't need to repair it at all. And in fact, if you have a crystal that breaks into a few pieces, I had a teacher early on who told me that was just the crystal's way of you know, saying that it wanted to be shared, that it wanted to be in more than one place at once. And so maybe you're meant to give a piece of it away. 
So you're definitely welcome to do that. Another thing that you can do is just kind of give it back to the earth. And you can do this in ritual or ceremony. You can make this just a very quick, easy thing. I just want to encourage you to be respectful and only leave crystals at places where you have permission to do so. So maybe a favorite tree in your own yard, um, maybe in a potted house plant, something like that. But don't leave crystals at sacred sites um, because many times this is not actually welcome. So just make sure that you have permission wherever you're leaving those pieces of crystals. Now, further than that, say it, do, you know, it, it doesn't really bother you, you can just keep working with it. That's fine. It doesn't matter if it's chipped or cracked or broken as long as it doesn't bug you. If it does bother you, though, you're like, oh, I know how beautiful this crystal was before, and every time I hold it or work with it now, I, you know, I just mourn that, I grieve that a little bit. That's understandable. That's okay. So then you're left with the decision, well, do you want to try and repair it or do you want to get rid of it? And again, this comes down to personal preference. So Kathy, to answer your question, the only ways that I know to repair a crystal would be to glue it. So you have to ask yourself if you feel comfortable with the glue there. I personally don't work with crystals that have been broken and glued. Some people don't mind this and that's fine. You know, it's totally personal preference. I wouldn't say that there's a right or a wrong here. It's just your preference. But if you are like me and you don't want to glue your crystal, the only other way that I know of to repair a broken crystal is to have a skilled lapidary repair it by polishing it or buffing out if it's a chip, something like that, or even recutting that crystal. And so if you have a crystal that, um, you know, you mentioned your angel shape and one of the wings broke off, if it was like a chip in a wing, you might be able to um, have a skilled lapidary kind of smooth that out a bit. And maybe it would just be a little bit misshapen. But if it was like the whole entire wing came off, I don't really know much of a way to fix that naturally. It's just one of those things that all of us crystal lovers have to face at one point or another because we will all have a crystal that gets broken or lost. But if you're dealing with a crystal that's broken, it's really, you know, asking yourself those few questions. Okay, does it bother me that it's broken or not? If it doesn't, you don't have to do anything. If it does, you have to decide, do I want to try and repair it? And then look at what your options are for repair, either gluing or having a skilled lapidary work on it. Or do I want to just offer it back to the earth? Does it kind of bug me? I don't really have a good way of fixing it. So time to let it go. And then, of course, check in and ask yourself that question from my first crystal teacher, which is, is that crystal just trying to be in more than one place at one time? Is it trying to be shared with someone else so that you have a piece and they have a piece so that you can stay connected? So kind of a lot to consider there. And Kathy, I'm sorry that I don't have a great answer for you. I wish, I really do wish that there was a way that we could repair our crystals without the use of, you know, some industrial strength adhesives. But unfortunately, I just haven't found a way to do that. So again, thank you, Kathy. I really appreciate your question. And if you're listening and you have a question that you'd like me to answer for you about crystals, spirituality, or anything else you're curious about right now, let me know over at loveandlightschool.com slash ask. The Crystal Healing Certification Program is coming soon. Want to know more? For info, free training, and to get on the list, go to crystalhealerschool.com. And now it's time to dive into our main topic for today, the healing properties of Rainforest Jasper. I mentioned this is a crystal for love and earth connection. So if you're a longtime listener, you know I always start these Healing Properties episodes out with a little affirmation to use along with your crystal. And here's what came through for Rainforest Jasper. I am gently grounded 
as I listen to the whispers of the earth and connect to the energy of my crystals. I absolutely adore this stone. In fact, the first piece of rainforest jasper that I ever got was a small tumbled stone that my grandmother gave to me. She gave me a little pouch and it just had like four or five different crystals in it. I don't even remember everything that was in there. There, I know that there was a turquoise nugget for sure, a natural turquoise nugget. It wasn't super large, but it was pretty good size for natural turquoise. And there was this beautiful rainforest jasper stone. And I think the thing that I loved about it so much were all the different patterns and colors and even the kind of consistency of the stone changing from translucent in some spots to opaque in others. So if you look at a rainforest jasper, and again, this is also called rainforest rhyolite, you'll see that it's mottled spots of clear and brown and gold and orange and cream, usually on a base of olive green. And this crystal is excellent for promoting a connection with nature. So if you've been feeling really disconnected from natural cycles and rhythms, this can help you get back in tune. It's also known for enhancing a green thumb, so being good with plants, and helps you to expand your knowledge of the plant kingdom, especially herbalism. So while you're learning something new about gardening or plants or herbs, be sure to have your rainforest jasper nearby to support you. It's also known for instilling respect for all living things, so helping you really respect every part of mother nature, from humans to mammals to fish and insects down to the tiniest living creature. It really connects you with Gaia, with the earth mother. Now it's also known for stimulating creativity. A lot of these swirling colors that come together kind of tend to get those creative juices swirling and flowing. And finally, Rainforest Jasper is great for enhancing love and trust in relationships. Now, it's associated with the first chakra or root chakra and the fourth chakra or heart chakra. Its corresponding zodiac signs are Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and Pisces, and it's related to the earth element. An excellent companion flower for rainforest jasper is the trillium flower, particularly white trilliums. I've found an excellent companion essential oil to be oregano essential oil, and a great companion stone is orange aventurine. And most of the beautiful rainforest jasper or rainforest rhyolite that you see available comes from Australia. Now, I wanted to share just a little bit about jaspers in general, because this is such a big family of minerals, and so frequently it's easy to get them confused or not quite understand where all the differences come from. Well, jaspers are primarily quartz, so they're made of silicon dioxide, or SO2, which has been broken down and then reformed within the earth, often picking up traces of other minerals in the process. So wherever this happens in different locations across the globe, the quartz will pick up different minerals based on what happens to be around in that area. More complex jaspers can even include veins or small pieces of other minerals like we see in rainforest jasper or rainforest rhyolite. Now, some jaspers are actually agates, rhyolites like we've been talking about, or even other types of stones. But in general, jaspers are associated with grounding and connection to Mother Earth. The really heavily patterned ones are also often associated with creativity and mental focus like we see with rainforest jasper. Now, because jasper comes in a huge variety of colors and patterns, people have gotten very creative with names given to specific types of jasper found at different locations, and they're frequently named for plants or animals. 
So these names not only describe the stone's appearance, but they often add meaning to the stone's uses as well. For example, leopard skin jasper, another type of rhyolite, is associated with animal communication, which makes a lot of sense, as leopards themselves have long been seen as messengers. Dalmatian jasper's associations also extend to its properties. It's fun, loyal, and cheers you up when you need a friend, just like a Dalmatian or a dog would. And as you might guess, elephant skin jasper ties in with memory and wisdom. Across many cultures and time periods, we've come to see and make use of these connections between plants, animals, and the mineral kingdom. And so if this crystal shows up for you, take time to really study it and get to know where those connections come from. Now, also, if rainforest jasper shows up for you, it's a good reminder that it might be time to clear your space. You'll find that you feel much better after you've removed any unwanted energies or people or beliefs from your physical and mental space. And it also reminds you to get in touch with the happiness of your inner child and really bask in the joy and the light of the sun, feel more playful and really supported and nurtured by Mother Earth. So I hope that helped you get to know Rainforest Jasper just a little bit more in depth. Do you feel intuitively called to work more deeply with your stones? To grow your confidence, knowledge, and connection to crystal energy beyond what you can learn on your own? Our award-winning Crystal Healing Certification Program will take you from crystal lover to a confident, certified crystal healer and help you discover your soul's path and crystal purpose. Maybe you want to deepen your personal spiritual practice by connecting more deeply to your stones. Or maybe you're already working with crystals, but you want to learn some more advanced energy healing techniques. Wherever you're at on your crystal journey, the Love and Light School's CCH program can help you become the confident and intuitive crystal healer you know you can be. Are you ready to listen to the nudges from the universe and take the next steps on your crystal journey? Our CCH program is here to support you every step of the way. Well, now it's time for our trending this week segment. So as you know, each week I bring you a quick discussion on something that's happening in the world of crystal healing and spirituality right now, or something that I'm just really loving that I want to share with you. And this week, Um, I have been doing so much work around my sacred space. I feel like since the time of in bulk, I've been actually for maybe one of the very first times in my life taking to spring cleaning pretty wholeheartedly. So I've been not just, you know, taking care of the sweeping and the dusting, but I've also been decluttering. I've been donating. I've been pulling aside things to give away to friends and family. And I've also been paring down my huge stash of tarot and oracle card decks and my spiritual library, all of my books. However, (laughs) that didn't stop me from picking up a few new tarot decks over the past few weeks. I guess it's one of those things I felt like I had a little bit of space and came across some decks that I was really interested in. And one of them had actually been on my wish list for quite a while, and it finally arrived this week. It's called the Accurate AF Tarot. It is absolutely stunning. It's designed and published by Prism and Fleur Design Studio. You can find them at Prism and Fleur, that's F-L-E-U-R.com. Or you can find them on Instagram at prism.and.floor. And I have to tell you, I always appreciate a tarot card deck that actually feels really good in your hands. And the texture of the box is almost velvety. And I feel like for something that is so tactile, like cards, something that you're really making a physical connection with, it makes such a huge difference. Now, one thing that I really like about these cards is they have almost kind of like a little moon phase type design on the back, and it's in this beautiful embossed gold. And the cards themselves 
are round. Now, I only have probably one other round card deck. Um, they're not my usual go-to, but there is something so magical about these cards. I love the artwork. They're soft, they're serene, and they're a little bit simplified. Um, and I, I don't mean that as a slight by any stretch of the imagination. It's almost like they're very um, uncomplicated. They've taken a lot away so you can really focus on the core symbolism and meaning of each card. They also have this really neutral color palette. So it kind of allows your eye to be taken to the most important areas on the card, be that a figure or something prominent in the landscape. There is a lot of kind of landscape happening in the background on these cards. And although getting used to shuffling around deck is not an easy one for me personally, these are a really nice size and really pleasant to work with. So my first reading with them, I felt like was a huge success. I like everything about this deck. If you've been looking for a new tarot card deck, I think you'd really enjoy it. Again, it's the Accurate AF Tarot by Prism and Fleur Design Studio. And they describe this as created as an invitation for you to deepen your connection with yourself on a mental, emotional, and spiritual level. Accurate AF Tarot is a dreamscape portal, your go-to deck for honesty and enlightenment. So if you have some self-reflection work that you're doing, if you need more clarity on something personally, I would highly recommend checking out this Accurate AF Tarot deck from prismandfloor.com. Well, that is it for today's show. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you want more information about anything I discussed in this episode, you can learn more over on the website at loveandlightschool.com slash blog. And if you did enjoy the show today, of course, the biggest compliment you can give me is to leave me a quick rating and a review over at loveandlightschool.com slash iTunes. And I want to give a big shout out to Broad Squatter 143 who says, so helpful. Love how short the episodes are and always straight to the point and filled with lots of information. I would love to have Ashley do a few more Q&A at the beginning as I always learn so much from those. So thank you so much for that feedback. That is definitely something I will consider. We do get quite a lot of questions submitted through our Ask Me Anything link, and that might be a good way to help me get through them a little bit quicker. So um, yeah, I'll definitely consider doing like one or two if I find that there are topics that go together well and kind of extending that segment a little bit. Thank you so much for that feedback. So again, if you'd like to leave a rating or review, you can head over to loveandlightschool.com slash iTunes, but you can also find me at loveandlightschool.com slash listen. And in fact, if you go to that link, you can see everywhere that our podcast is streamed and hosted and be sure that you subscribe so you never miss a future episode. That brings us to the end of this episode of the Love and Light Live podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Levy, and I'll be back with you in our next episode. Until then, crystal blessings. The Love and Light Live podcast is a production of the Love and Light School of Crystal Therapy. Connect with us online at loveandlightschool.com or on social at loveandlightschool.com.